If you've ever owned a Volkswagen Auto Group Mark IV platform car, like the Mark I TT, Mark IV Golf or Jetta, or a Cupra for my viewers across the pond, you already know that the fuse box on the battery is probably the weakest link in the car. I've had three fuse box meltdowns in two years. I fried an alternator. I wasted my time attempting a four gauge cable swap and it's left me stranded on multiple occasions. Um, in this video, Riley and I set out to build a permanent solution. So if you're looking for a permanent solution that is reliable long term, keep watching this video. So that's not good. That'll cause a lot of issues. Yeah, she's warm. I would say that that's over. Yeah, that's pretty hot. Yeah, I would say that that's at least 200 yeah, degrees. Yeah. Let's start by showing the viewer an extremely common problem in the Mark IV Golf Jetta Mark I Audi TT Mark IV Golf platform cars. This battery fuse box melting down. Um, I had so many problems with it that this is my third fuse box. This is my third attempt at trying to do some sort of alternator harness. I cooked an alternator. That's a new alternator. Basically, we're at this like crazy state where I've got this four gauge cable, but I've also got an OEM harness, which kind of not being used because there's a bunch of other plugs on it. So we're gonna like make a custom harness and redo this fuse box and do a custom solution. And hopefully we solve this very common issue. We've got a, a fuse to basically take, take the alternator, put it on its own little box. All right, so Riley unbolted the uh, old alternator wire. So this is my third attempt. This is a four gauge wire. I was trying to figure out some sort of solution. So I went with a bigger wire that worked for quite a while. But yeah, we're taking it out and we're gonna do a custom solution. I mean, you can see how hot this box gets and look at like just the discoloration on this alternator. We were having some issues with the dashboard, like flickering and stuff. My gauges would stop working here and there. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty fucked making our own fuse that's with better hardware and bigger cables and a better connection and hopefully that solves our issue. Got that cocksucker alternator bolt. So now we are uh, installing a fresh cable onto the alternator. We pretty much removed the uh, cables that go from like the voltage regulator on the alternator like the data type cables. We removed those from the original harness and we're kind of just taping those up as their own. So we can have that alternator power cable just be completely isolated and uh, we can monitor it, easily remove it and service it as needed. Okay, Riley's got this wire all done up. He's just plugging it in. All right, plugged in, all tucked up nice. And now we got our isolated alternator wire. All right, and now we have it in our, in our work area. This is a Bojack, what is it, 150 amp fuse. Uh, this is off Amazon. Basically just isolating the fuse, taking it off of this fuse box. And uh, this one, it, it, it takes raw wire. I mean, that's the big fuse on the top. We got these big old connectors. Just gotta get to cutting. Yeah, we'll get to cutting. make sure it's nice and tight so we're just repeating the process for the other side use make sure you get as much copper in here as you possibly can I mean that thing got hot in no time so we'll just once we get the battery connected we'll start the car up and let it idle and, and we'll know pretty quick if it's getting hot or not Alright. Anything warm? No, this cable is nice and cold. Okay. This is getting hot right before the connector right here. And this is also getting hot right before the connector because these connections are just shot. This this one on its own fuse as well? And then we just do that straight off of the battery. That would solve this issue. 
and then we would still have to figure out a way to power all these. I would say that at this point, we have successfully beat the alternator. Yeah, this is this is cold, but this is still warm. And so this goes to the interior fuse box. We wanted to find a new solution for this wire because it's been getting hot. Um, so pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna replicate what we did with the alternator wire for for this wire. This goes to the interior fuse box, which pretty much powers everything. So this junction is already kind of stacked to the moon. Well, that's why we have this. This is a battery terminal block that will allow us to run everything right off of the battery. Dude. And also, if you guys notice, this here is bright green. This fuse also melted down. So that also has been replaced. Pretty damn good. Start with this. All right, we got the wire out. All right, finally got that free. All right, so it got dark quick, um, but yeah, pretty much we got this cable that goes to the interior fuse box up to this new fuse. Now we just need some raw wire to go from here to here. Quick bolt test, that ain't going nowhere. All right, boys, so um, we've still been having some of our electrical issues. Um, nothing's been getting hot, melting down, or overheating. We've just been experiencing, you know, visible electrical issues in the car. So I came out here to uh, to try and sort it out. Now, the first thing you may notice is this post is now in a different location. Uh, what I found is this post right here got stripped out and it wasn't very tight. I found multiple of these connections in here that are stripped and will not tighten down all the way. So clearly we're just having some connection issues. I do have a fresh fuse box on the way. All right, guys, we are back back and uh, if you notice you know this little setup here is a little different um first things first this is a fresh battery fuse box and uh, i'm hoping this is the final iteration of at least parts i do want to you know mount up these wires in a better and more presentable way but yeah i guess it's time to go ahead and test the car one thing i did not get on video and i don't think i mentioned was that as this was deteriorating and just becoming horrible, I started to get a lot of running issues. I'd see the flickering stuff in the dash, the car would want to die at idle, and also I was experiencing some misfires under throttle and at idle as well. But all of that seems to be gone. Let's go take her for a spin. I just took it for a drive. This wire again, a little bit of warmth. Maybe we'll run it off of the battery block directly in the future. None of these other wires we were having issues with are getting warm. Everything seems to be good. So I think electrically, you know, everything's all set. I got some new parts to throw in the car, um, general maintenance type stuff. But uh, yeah, we're still sorting the car out. We're still learning. We're still figuring things out. If this video helped you, definitely, uh, you know, leave it in the comments. Let me know what helped, what didn't. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're uh, interested in helping the channel grow, absolutely share the channel, share these videos around. I'm trying to grow the channel. We're uh, enclosing on 500 subscribers here. Um, we've got some big things in store. Another video I have coming down the pipeline is, uh, that shifter bushing kit, I've been kind of putting that off trying to solve other issues, but that is something on the docket. And then I've also got something really, really big in store for the future of this car. I've been working on in the background. Um, within the next couple of videos, we will be introducing a new series to you guys as well as future plans for the car. Um, so definitely hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. I know lately I haven't been uploading as much. I've just been incredibly busy and uh, also taking care of some other things behind the scenes that you guys have not seen yet. So yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.